This is part 12 in our series of lectures on infinite sets. And in this lecture, we're going to consider the theorem which says that the cardinality of any non-empty set A is strictly smaller than the cardinality of its power set. Here's a formal statement of the theorem. It's just as I quoted you a few moments ago. And it is a theorem due to Cantor. So what it's saying is that there does, an ex there does exist an injection from this given non-empty set A into its power set, but there doesn't exist a bijection. In fact, we're going to prove the theorem by showing that it's absolutely impossible for there to be a surjection from A into P of A. So this theorem answers the question, um, given any set A, is it always possible to find another set B having a strictly bigger cardinality. So this theorem says yes, one can do that, and the answer is just choose your B to be P of A, and then you get a set of strictly bigger cardinality. So for example, um, remember we showed that uh, if you're looking at the set of real numbers, R cross R does not have a bigger cardinality than R, but Cantor's theorem guarantees that P of R, in other words the set of all subsets of R, does have a bigger cardinality than R. So let's now turn to the proof of this theorem. So here's the proof, and it, actually it's not all that difficult to follow. So we start with a non-empty set A, and the first thing is we have to produce an injection from A into the power set. Remember, the power set of A is the set of all subsets of A. So given any X in A, we have to create a subset of A from it, in an injective way, and what we do is we map x to the set singleton x, the set having only the element x in it. And I think you'll find it very easy to prove that this function g is an injection. Now, in order to complete the proof, we have to show that it's impossible for there to be a surjection from a to p of a. So we're going to argue by contradiction. Suppose that there does exist a surjection from a into p of a. Call it f. And what we're going to do is we're going to write down a certain subset of A for which it's impossible that that subset equals f of B for any B in A. And that would, be a contra that would contradict the surjectivity of F. So here's the one that is going to work. We define X to be the set of A in A such that A is not an element of F of A. So first of all, notice that that makes sense because if A is an element of A, then F of A is a subset of A. And so we can ask the question of whether or not A is an, is an element of that subset of A. If it's not, then we throw it in the set X. And if it is, then we don't throw it in the subset X. So now we have this subset X of A. And um, so X is an element of the power set because X is a subset of A. And so since little f is assumed to be surjective, there has to exist a b such that x is equal to f of b. Now we're going to get a contradiction from that fact. So this element of b satisfies f of b equals x. That's just this thing here. And here I'm just reminding you what x is. So now we ask the question, is b an element of that set x? Right? We know b is an element of a, so either it's in x or it's not. If b is in x, then on the one hand, from this equality, b must be an element of f of b. But on the other hand, if b is an element of f of b, then b is not an element of x, according to this equality here. And that's a contradiction. So that means b is not an element of x. But on the other hand, if b is not an element of x, well, since f of b is equal to x, that means that b is not an element of f of b. But if b is not an element of f of b, then according to this, b must be an element of x. And that's a contradiction. And so that contradiction proves that f cannot be a surjection, and that completes the proof.